let's continue with the other RNA viruses. So now this is question for you. This is a picture you might be having in your exam and they might ask you to identify. Identify which virus is this? Any guesses? Any guesses? I think you guys, if you are saying HIV virus, you're right. This is HIV virus. So how did I identify? The There are many clues, but uh, the important clue is this. You see inside you have RNA. How many RNAs? Two RNAs. You have two single standard RNA, which is very characteristic for HIV question. And other one is the reverse transcriptase enzyme, which is also very characteristic for your HIV. That is reverse transcriptase. It's characteristic for retroviruses. Retroviruses means it is HIV. Okay. And the rest, there are envelope protein. There is a, a pool of enzymes inside. Don't talk about that. And about gag gene. We're going to talk now. Now you're going to answer me all the questions. Tell me what is this? Family, HIV virus, family, retrovirus. HIV causes, of course, AIDS. You know, AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is a characteristic enzyme we just spoke, RT. That is your reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase enzyme. This question has been asked many times. This is the characteristic enzyme for the HIV virus. Okay, transcriptase. And how many single standard SNA it has? It has two. It has two single standard SNA characteristic. Usually every every RNA versus only RNAs, you know, usually uh, uh, one one only they have. But here it is two, two single standard RNA we have. Okay. Except there are a few exceptions where there are more segments of uh, RNA that we'll talk later in the coming uh, uh, RNA virus classes. Now, which is the most common type of HIV? We have HIV 1 and 2, which is most common and most dangerous? You know, it is HIV 1. HIV 1. This will not make mistake. Of course, it's a question. Everything is a question. I wrote this pattern because they all were questions. Uh, and then, uh, why it's dangerous? Because, see, you need only, uh, for uh, once when you acquire a HIV virus, to become an AIDS disease, you need just only uh, 10 years. Just by 10 years, you're going to get the disease. That's all. Okay. All right. Now, HIV 2. HIV 2. Yes. HIV 2 virus uh, is, it takes at least 20 years to occur. So it's very rare. Okay. Next. What are the common, which is the most common group? It's very simple. MC. MC means most common. So same way in HIV, the most common is group is M and subgroup is C. So can be asked. Can be asked. Okay. That's it. Structure of HIV is next one important, very, very important, especially the genes. We have structural, non structure non structure or this TAT, uh, this uh, name of this, you know, TAT, NEF, with these things. Okay, they are non structure not much significant. But important is what your envelope pollen GAC genes are very important. Now, envelope gene, as I told, it's the outermost one. Outermost means bada hota hai. So even the numbers are bada 120 and 41. 120 and 41. Question. You can have a question here. Paul gene is basically, you can remember as Paul gene is for enzymes. Pool of enzymes. Remember as pool of enzymes. What are the enzymes? All the polymerases, enzyme integrases, and reverse transcriptase. All these enzymes. Okay. All important. This was asked. Pool gene was asked many times. What does a pool gene represent? It represents the pool of enzyme. Paul gene represents pool of enzyme. What are the pool of enzymes? Reverse transcriptase, your polymerase, other polymerases, and then the integrases. Okay. And then gag gene. Gag gene is small. See, how do I remember gag gene? It's very simple. I remember the Lady Gaga. Simply Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, you know, she is getting old day by day. But every time, even she's getting older, her age is always between 17 to 24. It never goes above that. 17 to 24. That means, see, it's a very clue. It's a clue. Gag, gag, gaga, gaga, ages between 17 to 24. So this is the question asked. And I made mistake in my PG exam. So you don't make this mistake. Okay. I remember some exam, I, I, I wrote it wrong. So remember, that's what I'm giving this clue. Lady Gaga, she's always saying, evergreen. Evergreen, she's young. Her age is between 17 to 24 only. It doesn't go above that. Okay, so that at least means lower number. Lower number is for Gaga. So you will uh, make one question right. Okay, you don't have to think too much for this. If you all remember, if you have good memory, that's totally fine. But if you want some shortcut like this, crazy things, you can remember like this. Okay, now. Uh, what is the CCR5 core receptor mutation? This is important because the, those patients uh, who's having CCR5 mutation, they are lucky. HIV will not infect their CD4 cells. That's it. Very simple. CCR5 or core receptor mutation is 
the type of mutation that CD4 cell has this receptor. When you have mutation on this, of course, your HIV virus will not attack attack the CD4 cells. Okay, mm -hmm. so something like this, we have other uh, other uh, disease, other uh, uh, micro microbes has this type of you know uh, likes and dislikes. What are they? Uh, we we have studied when there is a Duffy antigen is negative, which malaria will not attack. If there is no Duffy, something will. Uh, if the uh, Duffy is negative then one thing will not attack. What is that? That is your Plasmodium vivax. Remember, okay? So Duffy is related with Plasmodium vivax. Okay, right. And then, like uh, when the iron content is low, what happened? When the iron content is low, what happened? Which is that uh, bacteria that talk, when iron content is low, toxin goes high. Can you guess? Based on iron, if you're saying diphtheria, you're right. Cornebacterium diphtheria toxin, diphtheria toxins. Okay, so these are the some you know that uh, related uh, uh, things. You know, if one is there, one will not come. That type of thing. Duffy is for vivax, and iron is for diphtheria. That's it. Okay, all our question questions. I'm just bringing here so that you know to again to revise it, and you will not forget it. Okay, examination point of view, transmission. So the transmission. There are two things. There are two. These are two different points you should know. One is which is the most common root of transmission and the other one is the, which is the most common risk of transmission. Root and risk all are different. These two are different questions. Okay. So when you talk about the root of transmission, you know, which is the most common one? Definitely sexual root is the most common one. That's the question. The most common root of HIV transmission is sexual. Like hepatitis B virus also. Okay. Even your HBV also same. Your sexual root is the most common root. Okay. But the question is not the risk. When you talk about the risk of transmission, of course, blood transmission is the most common risk because it's pretty, you're directly, you know, you, you just do a blood you're transmitting means the HIV is going directly into. So there is no way, you know, it's blocked. So the risk of transmission is high in the BT. So two different questions. Please remember the root is different, risk is remitted. See, if you see the risk through the sexual activity is very less, 0 0.1 plus back. Sexual, why? Because more sex, more sex, more, 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 day by day. So the chances are high. BT because... Though the risk is very high, we are very safe with the blood transmission. It's screened very well. So, you know, we have very less, uh, uh, the root is very less, but the risk is only very high. That is the chance of getting infectious. Okay. And needle vertical, we already discussed because uh, if you remember, your uh, hepatitis B virus, it's almost 90%, but here it is only 30%. HIV is only 30%. Okay, that's it. And needle stick injury, 0.3 percentage, but your hepatitis B virus, it was almost 30%, if you remember. Okay, so that's other things. Just uh, I'm trying to link all the things, but don't forget most common root is sex and the most risk factor, risk of transmission is blood transmission. So normal CD4 count, you guys must be knowing 50 to 150 cell. 50 to 150 cell is the normal count. Uh, in olden days, uh, during the FMG question, they used to ask how they say, uh, the cells are counted, CD4 cells are counted. That is through cytometry. I don't know these days they're asking flow cytometry, but yeah, still, you have to keep it in your mind. Flow cytometry is that instrument that is measuring the CD4 count. CD4 count, yes, one, 500 to 150. We count CD4 cells of the HIV patient. Okay, now, there are some diseases, according to the range of CD4, some disease risk is very high in AIDS patient. So what are they? Then... When the CD4 is, uh, when the CD4 count is 500 to 200, which are the infection very common, the most important, the most common infection in HIV is which one? If you're saying mycobacterium tuberculosis, you are right. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, MTB. MTB is the most common infection. Uh, and then the range is when the CD4 is between 500 to 200, you can get mycobacterium tuberculosis, you get herpes and you get candida. Okay, common. Mostly MTB is asked here. Okay, next. What about when it is less than 200? In less than 200, very important question. I also had this question in my exam. So please remember this. During my PhD, now I'm already uh, faculty, but then I, you know, I remember questions before uh, seven, eight years. Okay. So now when the CD4 is less than 200, which type of disease you get? What is the pneumonia common in HIV patient? Which is that? Uh, um, uh, which is that? Uh, micro, which is that fungi that causes this? You remember? It is pneumocystis zero VC, right? Pneumocystis zero VC. Zero VC. We'll, we will talk more in later in uh, mycology that. But then that causes pneumonia. The treatment is called pneumonia. So question. Meningitis, which is that most common cause of meningitis in HIV patient? That is a 
which fungus is that cryptococcus cryptococcus neoformis cryptococcus okay cryptococcus neoformis also when the cd4 count is less than 200 you can have it okay and one more infection that is cns infection also caused which is that one toxoplasmosis so these three diseases occurs when the cd4 counts go less than 200 when it goes less than 200 then only these infections happens okay severe ones then when the cd4 goes less than 52 infections can you guess I'm sure you, by this time, when you're revising uh, previous exam papers, under, you must have got an idea. Are you guys saying it is CMV retinitis? Very good. You're right. Cytomegalovirus retinitis, um, common cause of retinitis in HIV patient. Yes. When the CD4 count goes less than 50, you can have this CM retinitis. One more. One more. One more is, one more, uh, it belongs to Mycobacterium family only. Are you guys saying MAC? Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex? Yes, you're right. MAC complex. Okay. Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex. Mycobacterium avium intracellular intracellular complex. Okay. This is also one of the very dangerous type of this comes under mycobacterium class only. Okay. This is uh, in, uh, one of the dangerous infection. Okay. Which is doesn't produce any pigment. It comes under no non uh, photochromogens group. Okay. We'll talk it in the my in the TV class. Uh, diagnosis. Diagnosis, we have screening test, we have uh, uh, confirmatory test, we have supplement test. So let's talk about the screening test. Screening test is basically just the antibody detection. That means uh, with the screening test, is a, we can say a patient, HIV patient comes to you for some testing to know HIV is there or not. For that, just uh, the screening test is sufficient. Okay, just sufficient. You have to do any of these tests. How usually we do? We do one first one test we do, one of these uh, tests we do, the screening test, voila, Coombs test. If it's negative, we give negative only. But if the Coombs comes positive, then we reconfirm it by other two tests. That's the way it works. You understand? Okay, that is more detail. So that's not important here. For you here to remember is that screening test includes the comb test, which looks like a comb, okay? It is everywhere you did it in the antibody only. And ICT is immunochromatographic test. You know, that's basically the card test. You're checking for how many, you know, control, positive or negative that you're checking. Try dot is again, it is also like a, uh, uh, it will be like a, a kit where the three dots are there. That is one for control, other one is HIV1 and HIV2. Both can be detected. And of course, ELISA. Okay. These are the screening tests. What about the supplementary test? Supplementary test is any cases. It was used as confirmatory also, but nowadays NACO is recommending some other tests for confirmatory. This is not used anymore by uh, for confirmatory. That is your Western blot. Exactly. Western blot. Western blot test. So Western blot is another test. Okay. Confirmatory. After months of infection, only it's coming positive. So better to go for which test? Specific test. Can you tell me which is the specific one specific test that is says confirmatory of HIV? That is your if you're saying PCR, you're right. Okay, RNA PCR. Okay, we're doing the PCR. HIV RNA detected by PCR. Okay, PCR is the confirmatory test nowadays. PCR, right? By right. the confirmatory and early to date, earliest test to become positive. It means even at the day of 12 itself, by the day of 12 after HIV infection, every patient asks, right? Whoever has uh, sex or whatever, you know, they are scared of HIV and then the unprotected sex. Uh, they ask you, which is this a test which I have to do first? The first is there that becomes early positive is your PCR. Tell them to do a PCR to, uh, you know, not to be very anxious. Do by day 12 after HIV infection becomes um, uh, positive. So that is the first confirmatory. Second confirmatory is P24 also. But uh, this one, it's a type of ELISA only, but it rises at day of 16. It's just behind. Okay, so it means a PCR or P24. Both are fine, but best is, of course, PCR. But for pediatric HIV, that's a question. This is here, everywhere you're detecting the RNAs. But for pediatric HIV, what is the PCR you're doing? Are we doing RNA or DNA? You are doing DNA, right? HIV DNA. Remember, this is the only place we are doing HIV DNA PCR. Only for pediatric patient. Can be a question. So all are questions. Okay. But during window period, if they ask or earliest is to become positive, is PCR, RNA PCR, and your P24 is the answer. Okay, right. Now, treatment response. So, which is the best? Now, uh, patient is taking, uh, patient is on treatment. The patient is taking HIV treatment. So, you have to know the prognosis the patient is responding or not. So, for that, which is the best thing? Uh, before and all, we used to do which one? CD4 count, right? But nowadays, what you're checking? You're checking 
the viral load. You're doing PCR and you're checking the viral load to check the treatment response. Okay, that's important. This is also important. You should remember. Okay, so treatment response best did by the viral load. You do viral load test and then you check. That's it. Okay, finished. Now, this is a NACO strategy. This is more a PSM question, but at least I want to know at least which strategy is used for which type of uh, patients we are doing. Okay, so we are strategy one. Strategy one, subse important one, one. Uh, what is important for us? Humans ke liye, amare liye, sabse important kore, blood is important. Matlab, the strategy one is, one is for blood transfusion, okay, blood transfusion and any transplant patient. For this, we are following a, a strategy one. Strategy one means basically you do one test. It becomes positive, positive, negative means negative. That's it. That's the story. Okay, we have detailed thing that it's mostly PSM thing. If I have time, I'll explain in some other uh, classes. But remember this. Blood transfusion, transplant for one. One. Uh, what? One is always, blood is always first. Strategy two. Two is very simple. Yes, yes, oh yeah. So S for uh, 2A, 2A is for surveillance. Surveillance, okay? So don't make mistakes. Second A is surveillance. Second B is for symptomatic patient. Symptomatic patient. So don't forget. Na? So you will never make mistake in this. Group. It's very easy. That's what I'm bringing it here. Yes, ka second, second, okay? A for surveillance, B for symptomatic. Three. Three will be if a symptomatic half your to baki kya bacha hua. Only your what is left? Your asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. Asymptomatic patients. That's it. This is the strategies we are going to apply for uh, different type of uh, patients and their uh, criteria. Okay. Right. Then we are done with the HIV virus. Now, orthomyxovirus. So, orthomyxo, paramyxo, totally different. Don't confuse. Uh, can you tell me, can you tell me, uh, parma, uh, parma mixovirus has other uh, different groups of uh, RNA viruses and orthomyxo has some group of RNA viruses. Can you tell me, uh, example for orthomyxovirus, which is that one thing that uh, orthomyxovirus uh, uh, important, that group, which is that? Flu. If you're saying flu, you're right. Okay, I'll tell you how to remember that. The shortcut is like this. So, in orthomyxovirus, see, I don't know. I, I'm not against ortho, guys. Okay. I'm just really bringing some clues to remember. So, you already know that. I already told you ortho, guys. Ortho, guys. Kya hai? Unke pas kya hai? They have six packs. So, they have six pack. Madlab, six packs. Nahi hai. They have eight segmented packs. Okay. Eight segmented packs. Hai, number one. Number two, itna bhi, they are very muscular, everything, whatever it is. But, unke pas kya hota hai? Bar bar. Flu hota hai. That's what important. Ortho people have flu. Because which is the virus we are coming under uh, ortho mix virus? Influenza. So flu influenza is common for ortho guys. Flu hota hai. Dusra to I already told you they are negative. They are always negative people. I told you ortho guys are very very negative. Right? And uh, yeah that's it. They're six pack. They're negative and flu. Negative standard. That means negative means it's a negative standard. Okay. Right. So eight segmented uh, pack hai unke pas. Segmented virus. And then it's flu and negative. Then what they cause? Influenza. That's it. What about uh, paramyxovirus? In paramyxovirus, you know which is which are the things? Measles, very good. Mumps, yes, very good. And other things? Para, influenza, and respiratory syncytial virus. Also, there are two. Uh, not so common, Nipah and Hedra also. But which is not here? The question will be, which of the following is not paramyxovirus? Your rubella is not. Rubella will not come under paramyxovirus because rubella comes under which one? Toga. It belongs to Toga Viride group. Toga Viride group. Okay? So remember that. That's important. So you got it? That's the question. So uh, influence, or no, influence also will not come under paramyxovirus. It will go into this one. Okay. Right. You got it. Okay. And of course, I told you, if you remember, negative people, negative RNA viruses, who are the negative people here usually? Filthy, filthy, bravo. I told the shortcut was F-I-L-T, filthy, pra, sorry, pra, bo. In that, P for param, right? Paramyxovirus. So all the paramyxoviruses are negative standard RNA viruses. Got it? That's what I want to bring. Just I'm bringing it here and there so that you will never mark it. Negative means filthy probo. O is negative fellow. Okay. And usme P is param. Param is such a bad guy. It's negative guy. So param ke dar leke aajo. Param ke andar kya hai? Mumps, measles, uh, parent cancer, RSV. 
देर इज नो रुबेला है रुबेला टोटली अलग ग्रुप है उसका अलग करवा दो ठीक है राइट नाउ लेट्स गो टू ऑर्थमिक सो सो वॉट यू सी यू मैट हैव दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो and i'll i tell you to identify the picture and i'll tell you identify which virus is that there's only one clue for you what did i say ortho guys has how many segments eight segments so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this eight segments are there that is enough eight segments of eight segments of rna is there to give you clue what this is influenza virus or ortho mixo virus doesn't matter ortho ladko ko kya hota flu hota hai so atomic so or influenza got it yes so influenza a and b how many pieces of rna see i am saying why i am stressing uh, ortho guys have eight packs instead of six pack they have eight packs because that's a question they have eight pieces of rna the picture will come or direct question eight pieces of rna where is a and b c is seven pieces not much just you if you don't remember just remember c is seven pieces but a and b is eight pieces that's most commonly asked question okay you can just remember c is seven pieces Two stretches are important: hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Hemagglutinin, this is actually it should be hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Neuraminidase, other name is sialidase. Okay. Uh, now let's see hemagglutinin. There's a clue already. You don't have to think too much. Hemagglutinin A. That means what? A hemagglutinin. 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 Okay, I wrote hemagglutinin, complete name, but it's a hemagglutinin. Okay, H. That is simply H. The H. This helps in what? Adherence. Adherence to the. Adherence to sialic acid receptor. Adherence. What about neuraminidase? This helps in the after attaching the host cell. I mean, see, uh, sialic acid receptor is basically a receptor which present in our respiratory mucosa. So to attach the influenza virus, the normal flu comes from just don't attach to this receptor to cause the infection. It will attach. But uh, neuraminidase, what does it do? After attaching, enter into the host cell after the multiplication and everything, release to release the virus to release the virus from the host cell. After host cell, everything process release out. We have a neuraminidase sialidase. Sialidase, what does it do? It breaks those receptors and all. It it uh, it breaks the mucosa. And sends the virus outside, and that's what virus comes out and spread to other cells, spread out to everyone. All those things is done by neuraminidase. Okay, this is definitely providing immunity. H is pro H antibody provides immunity, but this is not for immunity. Instead, what they do, they destroy the sialic acid receptor. As I told you, they destroy the they destroy the sialic acid receptor. They destroy the sialic acid receptor. Okay, they destroy the sialic acid receptor. Okay, that's it. Now, uh, now. There's one process called elution. If you remember elution, elution is what? What does elution means? Elution is the reversal of hemagglutination. Okay, uh, we saw that hemagglutin name because hemagglutinins what they do they cause hemagglutination. They agglutinate the blood, right? Hem ko agglutinate karta. Hai. But reversal of H hemagglutination is elution, which is mediated by which one? Your neuraminidase. Neuraminidase. Okay, this one. So that means uh, the sialidase, right? The sialidase. We are talking about the sialidase. Uh, so what happens is that normally hemagglutination is done by hemagglutinin, and the reverse of that, that means preventing the hemagglutination or breaking the agglutination, that is called elution. Elution is done by neuraminidase or Sialidase. This was asked in many exams, so please remember. Elution is the process done by hemagglutinin neuraminidase. Again, it's seen in the influenza only, so don't confuse in influenza, influenza, influenza. Influenza. This is the important one. Hemagglutination and neuraminidase are the important things you have to remember. Okay. So now the types of the flu. You know the common ones are swine flu, H1N1. Just for the name, you have to remember H1N1 is swine flu. And H five N one is a bird, 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 bird. H five seasonal is H three and N two is a seasonal flu, seasonal flu. Okay, this may be asked, may be asked. We don't remember H five N one is bird flu, H three N two seasonal flu. Okay, yes. Now antigenic variation. This is very, very important. I think there was no exam without this question. When they want to touch the influenza, they will touch on this. It's very simple, very simple. How to remember? I'll tell you. Give you the clue. Drift shift. Don't think too much. Drift, the drift, go chord. The drift is not interesting. Our first, we like shift. Which shift we am talking? Shift. So, which one? Yeah, what? 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 What?
our beautiful shift car it's the favorite car for ortho guys ortho guys favorite car kya hai shift car hai so you see every 10 years every point is important please listen carefully every 10 years it's remodeled remodeled which one your shift car shift maruti shift car i'm talking okay maruti shift car is remodeled every 10 years and how does remodeling is done? They do see every time you see the engine is getting better. The you know, inside the internet, the um, everything you know, every mechanical part is getting updated, it's becoming advanced. That means uske andar kya hota hai? genetic re assortment. Hota hai. You got it? That's what. Shift is major car in many Asian countries, a major car all over the world. You can say world or in anywhere you want. Okay, everywhere this is a major world or epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to remember. You understand how to remember now? Very simple. Don't think too much. Don't waste your mind. Don't waste your mind and time and everything for this small thing. These are the things that you should be in your fingertips. So, antigenic shift, shift car, shift car is always number one, type A, okay? The shift car is always A1, A1 car, it's number A1, best, the best, you know, shift is always number one car, ortho guys are having or everybody is having. So, antigenic shift is happy, but drift is for both A and B, we are not interested. Antigenic shift happens due to what? Genetic reassortment. Question, 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 repeatedly, reassortment. You can check your uh, uh, question answers. Definitely, there is always a question based on shift is based on what. And uh, drift is just mutation. Yeah, it's asked in few exams also. So I'm not telling you to omit it. Just remember mutation. But genetic resortment is for shift to car, shift to car, shift to car. I said that every 10 years, every 10 years, they modify the shift to car. That's what it is, super hit. So what is it? There are major changes in the antigenicity. Major, the word major agya to shift car. The major epidemic pandemic be shift car. Many usko bola tha, world pura shift car famous. Hai. You got it? No, no mugging, gigging, nothing. Very simple. Shift, drift. Drift is chod the mutation. Shift is important. Shift car. Ortho larka flu hai, unke paas shift gaadi hai. Shift gaadi every 10 year, it gets modified. The machines become advanced. Everything becomes advanced, advanced. The gaadi, you see, you know, it's just on the streets. So that's what genetic reassortment happens. And because of that, what happened? It's major everywhere, all over the world. Okay. It is called major change. Antigenicity, major, major, major. Everything is major. That's it. Finished. Easy, no? You will not make mistake in influenza ever, ever. Don't even think of making mistake in influenza. Okay. So every 10 to uh, 20 years. This was a question asked. Shift happens every 10 to 20 years. Okay. So the clinical future, it can cause upper respiratory infection or lower respiratory infection. Right? And then... Uh, the other complications, if you talk about influenza, is the secondary bacterial infection. Secondary bacterial infections includes what? Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay, Staphylococcus and Streptococcus are the common ones. And diagnosis, you know, uh, it's same. Any respiratory infection, what are you going to do? You take a nasopharyngeal swab. It can be COVID or influenza, or swine flu, bird flu, whatever. You take a nasopharyngeal swab and then take it and then you're going to do a PCR. That's it. Vaccines, we have two vaccines, live nasal and killed vaccines. That's it. Okay. So these are the uh, uh, ortho mixovirus, whatever things you have to remember. Okay. Got it? Now let's move to the next one. Paramyxovirus. So now paramyxovirus, you just by seeing only, you're going to tell me the answers. I'm going to give a picture. Now you tell me, what is this? Something like this. So which virus is this? You can have direct question. This is a direct question. This is a radiology question, also micro question. What is this called? Steeple. It looks like a church steeple, right? Church steeple. So that is called steeple sign. So are you guessing now what is a steeple sign means? Where do you see the steeple sign? In which influenza? Para influenza. If you're saying para influenza, that is right. Okay. You're seeing it in the para influenza virus. Very good. That's the right answer. And what is the disease it is causing? It's causing what is why this steeple is happening due to what? The disease is called croup. Right? Croup. Croup is. Because of what? Croup is otherwise called laryngotracheobronchitis. Okay. So, your parainfluenza virus, what it causes? Croup, other name is called L A R Y N laryngotracheobronchitis. Laryngotracheobronchitis. Okay. And X ray, we saw what? 
steeple sign. I had this, uh, I had this picture in my exam, three, four, five, I mean, five, six years before, more than that, seven years before. Okay, uh, so that's a steeple sign. Now, the, so that's parent princess, parent princess done. What is this? Already you, you saw it, so you know the answer. This is swelling, swelling in the witch gland, parotid swelling. So when you see, just see the parotid swelling, any swelling, it is mumps, 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 bumps, mumps, bumps, remember it, mumps, bumps. Okay. And then who is the guy I want to bring here? Who, 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 who? Anybody name with Jerry, no? They are Jerry, J-E-R-O, Jerry, okay, Jerry. Okay, anybody with Jai, they are like, you know, they have big, big bumps, you know, big, big, uh, big cheeks. They have big boys, big cheeks, you know, what I'm saying, right? Mota, mota, hota. So Jerry always is mota. That means Jerry go for mums. Jerry gets mums. You have a clue here. I already gave you a clue. When I say Jerry itself, I think you guys identified what I'm talking. Yes, you're right. I'm talking about the vaccine stain, Jerry stain, okay? Jerry stain. So now the most common presentation in the mums, what is the most common presentation? It is the parotitis. Parotitis is the most common manifestation question. Mumps, mumps, bumps. Okay. And also not just parotitis swelling. We have swelling of the uh, orchitis means you know that is your orchitis is your scrotum testis. And ophoritis is the ovary, female ovary, meningitis and pancreatitis also can come. Pancreatitis was asked in some question. That means diabetes mellitus is seen in which? Mumps. So because this jerry, bada bada hai, uska pancreatitis hota hai. So he's getting diabetes also. Got it? Diabetes also. And diabetes is also seen in Coxsackie virus. We'll talk uh, in other classes. Vaccine is what? Geril. Geril lane strain. Okay. Geril lane strain. You remember Geril strain. Okay. Geril. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Geril lane strain is the vaccine produced for this thing. Of course, the vaccine is MMR. Mumps, measles, rubella, combination vaccine. So that, for that, the mumps especially from this strain. Geril lane strain. Okay. Right, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Don't forget. So Jerry ka mumps hota hai. Mumps, mumps, mumps. Okay. Now the next one important is your measles. Measles, other name of measles, rubiola, not rubella. Rubella is otherwise called rubella is otherwise called German measles. German measles. But measles is otherwise called rubiola. Rubiola. Okay. And the incubation period is 10 days. If you see at 10th day, it starts with a fever. That's a question. And on 12th day, what you have? This is, you see it on the 12th day. What is this rash you see? I'm sure you identified this. You know, what is that spot? What is that spot? If you guys are saying coplic spot, then you're right. That is the coplic spot. Coplic spot. All right. Now we are seeing here. So on 12th day, what you see? You see the coplic spot. And coplic spot is near to which mucosa? It's mucosa, but where? Near the which molar? Near the which molar? Near the second molar, but upper or lower? Upper or lower? Coplic L stands for lower. Second lower molar. Many times repeated question. Opposite to the second lower molar, you get the uh, coplic spot, right? And 14th day, you have rashes like this. Rashes on the palms, rashes on the body, like this. You'll have. And Macular papular rash. In measles, where does the rash starts? Can you make any guess where it starts? Where it starts? It starts behind the ears. Here, post auricular. Okay. Post auricular or behind the ear. Behind the ear. That was also asked some exam. The rash starts usually at the ear and then it spread to the face, arms, everywhere. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Uh, for chickenpox, it started on the face and then it goes to the other part of the body. Right? Okay. What are the C three C's in measles? It's cough. Coriza and conjunctivitis. Cough, coriza and conjunctivitis. Infective period. Infective period is, for chickenpox it was two days before rash and five days after the rash. But for measles it is four days before the rash and five days after the rash. Got it? For chickenpox, for chickenpox it was two and five. five. Two days and five days. Here it is four day and five day. Okay, this is for chickenpox. This is for measles. Okay. Most common complication is, Measles is, pneumonia is also right, but another, more than that, most important is otitis media, otitis media, okay. In chickenpox, it was secondary bacterial infection, most common. The most severe one was pneumonia, but here, the most common complication itself is otitis media or pneumonia combination, okay, right. 
the rare complication i told you rare complication the jc penny you remember the jc penny told when you go to jc penny you get pple right pple that is uh, uh progressive leukoencephalopathy but in measles it was asked in recent uh, fmg exam i think uh, but it is repeated many exams sspe sspe is sub sclerosing pan and kapal and kapha like this subscription pan it's a rare complication but dangerous complication it's just a fatal outcome because your brain is getting affected you know okay diagnosis what do you do yeah before diagnosis tell me this picture you will have and they'll give the this patient had a rash on the this uh in the buccal mucosa and rash on the body and all those things and they give and this was the uh, smear was done and the smear showed this one what is this this is a multinucleated giant cell multinucleated giant cell what is that cell name specially called here vartin pinkidli vartin it's w okay w vartin pin kidli cells coplic spot and vartin pinkidli cell is for measles m ko ulta kar do it will become w right and coplic coplic it's catastrophic coplic everybody knows coplic means measles 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 there's something porcimus spot that will come in rubella we'll talk later but now you remember coplic means measles now vartin pinkidli cell is a multinucleated giant cell and uh, and one more thing if you remember we saw that uh they have a measles mm mm has both type of inclusion bodies both intra nuclear and also intra cytoplasmic bodies right what are the two m's one was measles and other one was cmv okay the both the both intra and uh, intra nuclear is seen in the measles and cmv M M M M. Okay, remember this. Remember this. Okay, that's important. Watson Finkel is very important. Yeah, vaccine is Watson Edmonston. Again, the only clue here is measles is M. So M for Edmonston. Monston is mostly asked, but if they ask Schwartz also, there is W. So don't forget Schwartz. Okay, measles, Edmonston, or Schwartz, and mums, your Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. For chickenpox, I forgot. For chickenpox, it was. What was that strain for making the vaccine for chicken pox? I forgot to tell you there. It is what? Whenever you eat a chicken, a fried chicken, KFC or what, any chicken you eat, what do you say? You say, okay. You say, okay. When you eat a chicken, you always say, okay, tasty, okay. You know, you say, tasty, tasty, tasty chicken, okay chicken. It's for non-vegetarian people, veg people, I don't know. For non-vegetarian people, whenever you eat chicken, you say, okay, strain. Okay, very good. That's it. Now, next one. Rubella. Rubella, as I told you just before I talked to you, rubella is otherwise called German measles. It's a question. German measles. Don't confuse. It is not under orthomyxovirus. It is, this belongs to which virus? Toga virus. Toga virus. Okay. This is not paramyxo. It's not paramyxo virus. Okay. It's not paramyxo virus. It is the toga virus. And the rash present on the first day itself and it lasts for three days. Lymphadenopathy is catastrophic, but now the picture is this. Tell me what is this? You can have a uh, spotters like this exam picture. Coplic spot, it was under the mucosa. But see here. Here you see all the rashes on the uvula and palate. This is all daughter, daughter, daughter rashes. What are they called? They're called for shimmers rash. For shimmers rash also repeated question, which is catastrophic for rubella or for rubella for shimmer rubella for shimmer rubella got it question 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 what's this beautiful thing it looks like a what muffin if you have tasted this in ccd you will understand in ccd this is popular this muffin that is a blueberry muffin the blueberry muffin i'll give you a clue don't worry i will make it easy don't worry now uh see ya uh what is the spot this is the porcima spot okay same thing the answer i want to tell is which is the, this is the spot here okay same thing porcima spot okay palate you will appear along with the rash congenital rubella syndrome is very very important okay when you're talking about whenever you're talking about your uh you're talking about uh, uh torches if you remember in torches one of the disease in torches is torches is rubella or so rubella has causes the congenital syndrome so what is the shortcut you remember? When you have a rubella child, what you do? You give 
when you have a rubella child, you have to give what? CCD blueberry muffin. Give them a CCD blueberry muffin. Give them a CCD blueberry muffin. Okay. What does the CCD for stand for? You already know. CCD for rubella child, please give a CCD blueberry muffin. That means, what are those things? You remember C for cataract. Another C for cardiac defect. It's a repeated question. Cardiac, which is the most common defect you know, you guys must be knowing for sure. PDA, patent ductus arteriosus, repeatedly asked. You have to know, no other option. Patent ductus arteriosus is common in the congenital rubella syndrome. Okay. And then D for deafness. The baby will have deafness also. And as I told you, blueberry muffin rash. So don't forget CCD for rubella child. Kya de dogi usko? Poor rubella baby ko. You give the blueberry muffin. CCD, blueberry muffin. Okay. But Wamper Kohn, who gets the slap chick appearance? Who slaps the child? Who, who, who? Pari, parvo virus. Don't forget. Oh, bacheko, that's different. Slap chick, pari ko bacheko kya hote? She got slap uh, rash at time, but slap chick appearance at time, infectiousum. And also, kya ta? Us bacheko kya ta? A plastic anemia and erythroblastosis fetalis, non immune. Hydrops vitalis, sorry. It's hydrops, non-immune hydrops vitalis. Okay, parvovirus. Now, this is different thing. This is congenital rubella syndrome. Ka CCD, blueberry muffin. De do, bus. And the vaccine is RA27 bar 3. Done. Okay, now RSV. Respiratory sensitive virus, there's one disease you should know. It's of course, respiratory sensitive virus for children, which is that one infection that respiratory sensitive virus causes. Any guess? It causes, which one? The most common cause of that disease is this RSV. Related to respiratory system, related to bronchus, that is acute bronchiolitis. Acute bronchiolitis. Very important question. And the name itself has R as respiratory synsectivals, S for synsectium. So there is synsectium formation. The cells, you know, that is uh, like when you grow in this thing in uh, cell culture or not, they form the synsectium formation. Okay, that's it. Metanephovirus also causes respiratory infection. Nipha virus, the last one. Uh, Nipha, important is that this is, you know, the recent outbreak happened recently, few years back, Kerala, uh, encephalitis it caused. The main thing amplifier was the pig and the reservoir was fruit bed. This is important. The fruit bat, the fruit bat is important. This is the Nipha virus. Ka. Reservoir is the fruit bat was the question. And the disease it is causing is encephalitis. Encephalitis, Nipha cause encephalitis. And the reservoir is fruit bat. Identification is by PCR. Okay, that's it. So we are ending with the uh, mixoviruses. After one, paramyxoviruses is done. Okay, let's continue with other RNA viruses uh, soon in the uh, coming classes. Yes, so any doubts or whatever, uh, I hope in further uh, classes we'll have more discussion and we'll do that. Okay, thank you.